Now I would like to talk about how we solved the case in a real project. It was in Munich, but in another big city in Germany. And uh, this is how we approached it. We concentrated on the main hubs and clustered stations by their revenue potential into low, medium and high potential stations. In percentage, how would you classify the stations? Let's do it with some uh, wisdom of the math. 70, 20, 10 percent is a pretty good approach in this case and what we actually used. So our structure looks like this. 70 percent of the stations have a low revenue potential and passenger volume. How could we use them for transit oriented development? For example, we could install vending machines or ATMs. In our assumption, 20% of the stations have a medium revenue potential and passenger volume. Think about a small hub where two lines cross or where there is some available space around. You could potentially open a Starbucks, McDonald's or maybe a kiosk. Only 10% of our race stations have a high revenue potential and passenger volume. They are the main hubs and potentially connect with other forms of transportation like uh, the bus, uh, maybe bike sharing or a taxi station. You definitely have space around that you could rent out and generate additional revenues. For example, you could provide office space, apartments or include supermarkets. Thus, the ridership would also be increased because the station is becoming more attractive. After a general approach was presented and agreed upon by the interviewer, you should return to the big picture. We want to increase the revenue. After we have clustered the stations, we can think about how to increase the revenue. So the question is, what is done currently? What can be done in the future? Like I stated earlier, you should discuss this with your interviewer and challenge possible approaches. I also mentioned earlier that you could send up vending machines, ATMs, or maybe build a parking lot. To calculate the revenue of these, you need to know how many square meters are available and what the price, what the price per square meter is. Or can you maybe use innovative contract forms like revenue sharing so you can benefit from the success of your renters? What could you do additionally? You should also consider an increasing passenger volume which means more farebox revenues or more revenues through advertising since a high passenger volume is more attractive for advertising partners. The price advertisers pay for advertisements is often calculated based on the number of potential viewers. So we have our structure and divided the stations into three different clusters and the revenues into two different clusters. Now it's time to do the math. I would start off with the new revenue sources and divide them into the three station structure we have just set up. As you can see on the left, there is always some information given in the case. There are assumptions, of course based on uh, sound explanations, and there is information you simply have to calculate. When we do the calculation for the high revenue potential, it's a way for me to see how well you can calculate. If it works pretty well, I will give you the other numbers right away because it doesn't create any extra insights to make you do the five calculations. If you have trouble now and then, I will let you do more calculations to give you a chance to improve and correct your mistakes. First, I would like to concentrate on the right side with the large revenue potential stations. 40. So we said we have a 10% share of high revenue stations and if you paid attention earlier, we already know the total number of stations. We simply needed to add up the race stations and 10% of that makes 42 stations. Then we should take an assumption. How big is a station? I simply estimated 250 square meters per station. That's a broad estimation and could actually be a little higher or lower, but should make sense in general. We can also say that the space around can be used. Here I simply assumed a commercial space of 10,000 square meters. Now it's time to calculate. If I multiply 42 stations by 250 square meters, 
that makes 10,500 square meters for large revenue potential stations. And the space around the stations will be 420,000 square meters. Pay attention to decimal places here. The next step would be to consider that not the total space can be used for transit-oriented development. After all, there are trains leaving the station and arriving, uh, so there must be a track bed, a waiting area, a place to buy tickets, and so on. Thus, you can't rent the whole area. It's important to consider this and to communicate it to the interviewer. I assume that 30% of the station can be used for transit-oriented development and the rest is necessary for traffic. Concerning the price, I assumed 40 euros per square meter. The price can vary, but should be a realistic assumption. Now it's time to calculate again. First, it is important that you take the 30% of the 10,500 square meters since you can't rent the whole space. Then, multiply it by 40 euros and you will get 126,000 euros. Concerning the land around, there is no track bed, etc. You can so that means you can actually rent out the whole space, which is 100%, right? Multiply that by 40 euros to get the revenue potential for the large revenue potential stations. As you can see in comparison with the other station types, the total revenue potential here is significantly higher, even though the number of high revenue potential stations is the lowest. I would probably just have given you the other numbers and you, should, uh, you just would have had to sum them up. Going on with the existing revenue sources, I would calculate them similarly. Depending on how the first calculations went, I would take a closer look at the numbers or go through this part of the case a little faster. Here it is important to calculate how many additional tickets I can sell because of transit-oriented development and how much additional revenue I can make in advertising. Just to demonstrate the calculations, I'm going to do them with the little revenue potential stations right now. Again, we have the number of stations, an assumption we need to take concerning the size of the stations and by how much the ridership can be increased. These stations are not very attractive, but maybe an additional vending machine or ATM might increase their attractiveness. Let's say we increase the ridership by 5%. This will make the network as a whole more attractive as well. Our current farebox revenue is 75 million million euros. How did I get that number? I divided my stations according to the 70, 20, 10% cluster. My total farebox revenue from the first page was 750 million euros. So I simply converted it and uh, meaning that 70% of the stations are only responsible for 10% of the revenue. That's how I came up with the 75 million euros here. That's also an assumption you can play with, but keep in mind to explain it. Wrapping it up, the additional ticket revenue would be around 4 million euros. Advertisement revenues can oftentimes be calculated based on ticket revenues since the views correlate directly with the number of passengers. Here I assumed an increase of 2%. Again, it's okay to take assumptions, but explain how you came up with them. To calculate the advertisement little revenue, you also need to consider how much you can earn additionally due to increased attractiveness of the station. I assumed 1%, which makes an extra revenue of 3.8 million euros for the little revenue potential stations. That's the general way to do it. You see that we have to take some assumptions and do some calculations. This varies from case to case depending on how much you have already calculated and how, how well it went. You are also welcome to take assumptions and dialogue with the interviewer. So these are the numbers for the other stations which make up the total revenue potential. That's 112 million euros and can be presented to the CEO now. After all these calculations, at the end, it's time to ask, which other out-of-the-box solutions can I come up with? What are possible other sources of revenue? That was also a question in the beginning when we asked which other additions the CEO had already thought of. Now, you can get as creative as possible. 
Here you can see some of my ideas. Can you monetize the geodata of your customers? Are there any station-based in-app opportunities? Could you digitize the advertising? Can you create a station city? How can you improve the intermodality offering at your stations? Feel free to come up with a great variety of plausible ideas. Now, that's pretty much the end of the case. What usually follows is a brief summary of your results. It is important that you reflect the initial question again and explain your solution, focusing on the main result. In this case, the CEO is your audience. What was the main question? The revenue should be increased solely via leveraging rail stations. What was the executive summary? Explain the main points first and then get into the detail. Here, the main point is that the total revenue potential comprises of 112 million euros when you focus on the real estate market. On top of that, there are benefits from additional ridership effects, which also influence the advertisements. Give a short overview on your structure, your approach to cluster the different stations and revenue types. Contextualize the revenue types and how station types differ. At the end, you should give a recommendation how revenues can be increased best.